Hi there. In this video, I'll show how to set up in-app purchasing for a non-consumable item. And some of the important information that I'll be sharing, you probably won't be able to find it in any of the documentations. I use this process for my Android game, Farm Hero, so you can download it and see it for yourself. About three years ago, I did make a in-app purchasing video, but I only covered consumable purchases in that video. And the process that I showed three years ago still works. I read through the comments that I had on uh, that video, and I'll try to answer them in this video. Right now, it's almost 2025 already, and Unity 6 is out, so I'm going to be using Unity 6 for demonstration. First, let's make sure that we have the package installed. So go to Package Manager, and you can just look for in-app uh, purchasing in the Unitree register and also in Unity 6 they moved the services here as well so you can find it under here as well. After that package is installed you can go to configuration and you'll have to connect this project to a Unity project ID for the in-app purchasing to work. After that is done make sure you enable it in the corner right there. My current target is Android so I'll be uh, targeting that and you have the configurations that you'll need to do to connect a license key. So the instructions here are pretty straightforward, so just follow those and do that connection. After that is all done, you want to add the products. So you can go under Services and Add Purchasing, IAP Catalog, and here I have two products, so Coin 1000K, it's a consumable, and I've covered the consumable process in the other video, and that process still works. Now, the second product that I have here that I've added is a non-consumable. So the difference between consumable and non-consumable, consumables can be purchased more than once in your game. A non-consumable can be purchased only once, and they should be restored if the app gets uninstalled and installed again. Your game should give that product back to the player once they install. If you don't have the logic for giving that product back to the player, when they will be attempting to purchase it again, it will be showing an error saying that this product was purchased already. So if you're using non-consumable, be sure to have the restore functionality set up as well. And I'll be showing how to do that in this video. For Google configuration, we can also specify the price or price template. Uh, once we have the product ready, let's go and connect it. And I'll cover some important things that you're probably not going to find in any documentations. I had to find this on my own. So for setting up, I have this pop-up right here that is going to be displaying. And I want this button to create the purchase. So currently this pop-up is disabled and once I click this add button right here, it will turn it on. Inside of this game object, I want to add a component IAP button. So product ID, I want to do the no ads 50K and the button type. So there's two options, purchasing or restore. The restore button option is for iOS. iOS requires you to have a restore button in your game to restore any non-consumable purchase. But for Android, that process is done automatically. You have to have the code for restore ready at all times. And since we are setting a non-consumable, I'm going to set this up in a way that it's going to work for restore and for purchasing as well. The next option that we have here is consume purchase. This is a very important setting right here. If you disable this setting, you will manually have to go through process of acknowledging a purchase after the purchase was made. If you don't acknowledge the purchase, the purchase will be refunded. And I saw that in the comments on the previous video as well. So people were getting refunds after they were making the purchase. And this consume purchase option is one of the reasons why you would have a refund. But even if you have this enabled, if you incorrectly set up the IAP button, it will be ignored and the purchase would not be acknowledged. And that is something that I didn't find in any of the documentations. So I had to actually figure out how it works on my own. So here is a very important thing to keep in mind when you're using the IAP button. So it's the same for the IP button legacy. And this is the button that I used in the previous video. But when you have the consume purchase item, you need to make sure that the purchase complete process that you have here won't disable the IP button or the game object that it's in. If you disable the IP button in this state, the consume purchase will never run 
And that is when after each purchase someone makes, it makes a charge. And after a little while, it's going to refund those purchases. But inside the game, they feel like they've bought it. So the mistake that you might be doing is adding this game object that is displaying the pop up and go into a game object and setting active to false. So if you set it up like this, the consume purchase will never be triggered and any purchases that are made with this button will be refunded. So this is very important to understand the process that is going on here. So that's why instead of disabling this game object, I have a child object that just has the UI element of it and I can just disable the child. So how it's gonna work, if I click that button, it's gonna disable the child, but the game object with the I button is still active, which is gonna allow the code to run after this event is triggered and the consume purchase logic is gonna run as well. Now I'm gonna connect that button here as well. So here's my button USD and that is the button that is gonna be triggering the purchase. And pretty much this is complete configuration for the IAP button. Now you might have noticed that the only thing I'm doing right now is disabling the pop-up and I'm not running any logic that changes the game to take in consideration that this purchase was made. And I can add another event here that I can use to run the logic for disabling the ads in my game. So in my case, I want to disable ads. So I can go to my Unity Ads controller and I can just run the no ads. And that will complete the logic for the purchasing button. So in fact, we can test it out and confirm that it's actually working. So as soon as you install the game and you start, there is no ads in the game because you haven't even tried it. I have them disabled by default, but if you play the game, if you try it out, you know what, what the game is about. Then I display the option for removing the ads if you want to continue playing the game without any ads. So I can click on this button and that should give me the pop-up. If I decide to purchase it, I do the purchase and I do the fake store purchase. That's gonna remove uh, that button and we should be able to play the game without any ads. Uh, but one thing that this setup won't cover is restoring purchases. So this configuration would work pretty good for a consumable, but since we want the restore option as well, Instead of having the logic here, what we'll do is go to our hierarchy and add another game object. We'll call it IAP. And in here, we'll add the IAP listener. This will listen to all the events on any buttons that you have. It also has the consumable purchase option here and do not destroy it on load. So make sure you keep these uh, options in mind when you set this up. Now, since this listener listens for every product purchase, it's going to be listening for consumable products as well. So that's why it will be important for you to know what product triggered this event. So I've created a IAP farm hero script. And in this script, I have purchased method, which accepts the product. So let's take a look at that script. Yes, so here is the simple script that runs. So unpurchased, I get a product based on definition ID. I check what product was purchased and perform the appropriate tasks. So by setting up the IAP listener like that, this will also cover the restore option for Android. Because on Android, once you launch the game and you have previously purchased a package, it will automatically trigger the purchase completion on all the purchased non-consumable items. And this listener is gonna take care of it. Now you saw that I had the consumable script there as well. And that is why here for the coin 1000K button, I also just close the coin. Now how my game is set up, I actually moved the IAP game object from my home scene to the loading screen. And this is the screen that loads once when you turn on your application. And that's how I make sure that I don't have multiple IAP listeners in my game when I'm using do not destroy unload. To test it out on your Android device, you will have to publish it to Google Play under closed testing or something like that uh, so that Google can process the test payments. If you guys want to see a video on how to set that up, be sure to write that in the comments and I'll see what I can do. But hopefully this gives you enough to set up in app purchasing for a non-consumable products for your game as well.
If you found the video helpful, be sure to click on the like button and subscribe if you haven't already.